All right, pop artists, so you finally finished recording all of the songs you want for your new album. These are snapshots of your life and you want them to come together to tell a cohesive story about you and your experiences. If you're ready to formulate a track list that's going to allow your fans to see the world from your eyes, then stick around, because in this video, I'm gonna be sharing five of my best tips for creating a track list for your next album. Let's blast off. Konnichiwa Cyborgs, I'm Jonathan Miller and welcome back to Jonathan Miller Music helping you become a better songwriter. I make futuristic and outer space inspired dance pop music and every Wednesday on this channel I'm helping others take their music to level 2. If that sounds good, consider subscribing. If not, fine, cool, whatever, I don't need you. Yes, I do. Please subscribe. All right. So before we get into this, please remember that these are just guidelines. They are not concrete rules. You do not have to follow them. I'll say it a lot in this video, but it's ultimately up to you and your project and what feels right. So take it with a grain of salt. But in my 11 years in pop music, these seem to be good guidelines to follow when you reach this part of the process. And with that out of the way, now let's begin. Number one, don't have your first single be the first track on the album. Now before you get mad, there are obvious exceptions to this rule. Again, these are guidelines. I found that a pop album flows better when the first song is not the single. It's fun to kind of have your first single a little bit further down the list because it gives your fans like an anchor. It's like, oh, I know this one. I know where this chapter fits in in the story. But it's good to have an additional track that kind of pulls your listener in besides the single. Now, whether that song is a cool intro track or it's a complete song full of hooks, the choice is up to you. The goal is ultimately to set up the stage for your entire record. This can be your title track, it can be an awesome club banger, although it is becoming more and more common to start off an album with a ballad. Not my personal choice, but to each their own. Number two, pace your album with peaks and valleys. I did a video a couple weeks ago about choosing your first single and how to rate your songs on an energy scale of one to four. In it, I told you to save these ratings for when this video would come up. Well, the time has come, bitches. If you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend you check it out first. There's a link in the description below so you can pause this video and go and watch it and then you can come right back and resume right where you left off. You wanna take your listener on a journey of highs and lows, up-tempo pieces and softer ballads. If your album starts off with an up-tempo dancey anthem, Keep that energy going for a couple tracks before you slide in that ballad. When you start off your album with a bunch of energy in the first few tracks, a lot of pop artists tend to have one of those songs eyed as the second single because fans will hear it early on in the album and they're more likely to remember it. Or they've already chosen it as the single and they're filming the music video right about the time the album is released, but that's neither here nor there. If you start off your album with something mid-tempo or a ballad, have track two or three become a little bit more energetic. For example, let's take a look at my last album, Five. The first track track is a cool mid-tempo intro track. It starts kind of slow and then it builds and then it slows down again, which I just realized is kind of the pace for the record. Hmm. Track number two is War With Love, which was my first single. See? I broke my own guideline. And the reason was is because I felt its mid-tempo beginning was a good transition from the intro track. And it was also kind of an experiment. I had never put a single that close to the top of the album before, so I thought I would try it out. Track number three is my title track five, which is all energy. I wanted to bring the mood up from introspective to let's have a party. Track number four is Martin Ozzy, which is another mid-tempo song. I placed it right after five because it was still an important snapshot of my life and I wanted it to kind of act as a soft landing after such high energy with five so that's why i put that there track number five is addicted which is up in mood from martin Ozzy, but it's still relatively mid-tempo so it kind of continues that soft landing a little bit and then track number six is now that you're gone which is the first true ballad you hear on the album so you can kind of experiment but as long as your album does this you're gonna be fine number three your album should be at least 10 to 15 songs. Now I know what you might be thinking. Wow, that is a big gap. But a lot of artists are pushing the boundary right now and I'll talk about why in just a second. To qualify as an actual album, it needs to be at least seven songs long and 30 minutes in length. Now the reason I gave you such a wide gap is because right now as physical sales start to decline and digital sales start to increase, artists aren't getting as confined to a physical CD which is about 75 minutes long. So that's why I gave you such a large range. That will probably change as time goes on, but really out of all the songs you've recorded, you just need to decide how many songs it's gonna take to tell your story. This is also going to vary project to project due to a variety of factors, budget, production time, what 
what you want your album to be. There's no real right way to do it. There's no magic number that's gonna get you the best album, the number one, the Grammy. The amount of tracks really doesn't matter. Also, your track list does not include bonus tracks. If you wanna check out my video where I talked all about what those are and how to add them properly to your album, you can click the link in the description below and that's where I'll fill you in on all of that. For example, Five's final track list is only 12 songs long, but it has an additional three bonus tracks for fans to continue kind of listening, even though they don't fully add to the overall message of the album. Ultimately, just because your album is longer or shorter, it doesn't diminish the quality of your album. I've said it a lot in this video, but do what feels right for you. Number four, save your most emotional song for last. Again, not a concrete rule. It's called the album closer and it plays an important role on what impression your fan is going to leave with when they finish your album. Do you want them to leave happy, inspired, thoughtful, sad? Think about this. I've closed my albums with various emotions before. For example, my song Finally Off the Elevator finishes the space between because it was kind of like the last stage of the grieving process, which is what the overall theme of that album was. It's all about acceptance and learning to move on from such a difficult point in your life. It's a happy track that became a fan favorite and actually became one of my best-selling singles of all time. And in contrast, Something You Don't Know finishes five with this unfinished business vibe. It's about wanting to tell someone your inner feelings and wishing you'd gotten the chance to do it. It's almost regretful in a way, which is definitely something I was experiencing at the time. So there's no right way to do it. I just think this is one of the ways you can leave a really good lasting impression on your listener. And number five, this is probably pretty obvious, but listen to your album over and over again. Move things around if it doesn't feel right. Are you taking on a journey? What impression do you want your fans to have? What impression do you get when you listen to your album? Listen to various versions of your record, and if you're still not sure, ask a close friend or family member to listen all the way through and give some feedback. Trust me, it gets a lot easier with time. I'm on my sixth album, I'm working on a new EP, and it really starts to come natural. You don't have to overthink things, Trust your gut and just do what feels right. So those are some tips for formulating a track list for your next album. Question of the video, are you starting off your next album with an up-tempo, mid-tempo, or slow song? Let me know in the comments below. If you wanna check out any of my videos about how to select bonus tracks or choosing your first single, there's links in the description below, so make sure you check them out. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on it and subscribe if you're new. I put out new videos every single Wednesday. And if you've got any requests or questions, hit me up in the comments. And that's gonna be it today. Once again, I'm Jonathan Miller, and I will see you next time. Matane!